Good morning. My name is Reverend Cindy Layton, and I am blessed to be the pastor at Smithville First United Methodist Church in Smithville, Texas. During this unprecedented time of COVID-19, we have been, like so many, closed to worship in our sanctuary, but we have made a valiant effort to provide recorded worship every week for anyone who wishes to view them. They are available on YouTube, and you just look for Smithville, First United Methodist Church in Smithville, Texas. And you can also go to our website at www.smithville-umc.org, and you can find a link there to the worship times. We know that worshiping uh, electronically is not exactly as uh, what we would want to be doing at this time, but it is a blessing from the Lord that we are able to continue to worship together virtually through these videos. So welcome, may God bless you and, and keep you safe, amen. Good morning, welcome to Smithville First United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Cindy Layton, the pastor here at SFUMC and I welcome you to worship today on August the 9th. We do have one announcement before we begin our time of worship. If you will, those who are members of this community of faith, if you will check the August newsletter when you receive it, there will be included in it a list of school supplies for the children in the Smithville area. If you are able to purchase any of the items on that list, we would welcome you to come and drop them off in the church office. We hope to um, gather together quite a large amount of school supplies to give to the school district so they can then pass them on to the children that need them. Let us begin our time of worship with the call to worship. Thank you. 
this time in our worship, we would normally be receiving our tithes and offerings. And I do want to thank all of those who have so faithfully continued to give to Smithville First United Methodist Church during this unprecedented time. If you would desire to send in your uh, tithes and offerings, you may do so by mail by sending them to P.O. Box 698, uh, Smithville, Texas, 78957. Or you may give electronically by going to www.smithville.umc.org and click on the PayPal link and they will give you instructions how to proceed to give electronically. Or you are always invited to come by the office Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and drop your gifts by the office. We will gladly receive them from you. We give thanks to the Lord for the faithfulness of all God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, our pianist, Becky Brooks, will lead us in a time of silent worship as she um, shares her talents with us through music. Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you and we praise you for this day in which we are blessed to be able to gather together. Though it is not in the sanctuary and in person, 
we know that where your people gather, your spirit is present with, present with us. And so wherever we may find ourselves, we thank you for this time to worship you. We thank you, O Lord, for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your presence with us in the midst of all of the storms of life that seem to assail us from all sides at times. But we know, O Lord, that you are with us, that we are not alone. And for that, we truly are thankful. We do place all of those prayer requests that were mentioned in, uh, this morning into your loving care. We know, O Lord, that you hear and answer in your perfect will and your perfect timing. And we do lift up all of those who are searching for a vaccine that will be effective against COVID-19. We pray that you would give them insight and understanding and wisdom as they search and that one will soon be found, Lord, that will be effective. We also pray for so many people. As time goes on, more and more of us know someone, and oftentimes many, who have either died or have been sick with COVID-19. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would have mercy. Have mercy upon us, O oh Jesus. And upon not only our country, but upon the whole world that is struggling against this dreaded sickness. So we place ourselves very humbly into your loving hands. Again, we thank you. For we know that we are not alone and we can bring all of the concerns and especially the joys that are in our hearts and minds to you. And you always hear and answer in your perfect will and your perfect timing. We pray that you would continue to bless Smithville First United Methodist Church and we give you thanks for those who have been so faithful in serving in so many different ways, even though the Sunday morning doors of the church are closed. We know that we are called to continue to serve in any way in which we can. So we give you thanks. We love you. We thank you. We praise your holy name. And we pray all of these things in the powerful and matchless and holy name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now join our voices in our next hymn, Through It All, and we will sing through this chorus twice.
Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Hear the word of the Lord. Immediately, he, Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our married life, my husband and I have had the opportunity to travel quite often. And any time that we're along one of the coastlines of our country, or even in Hawaii and in Alaska, um, we enjoy doing whale watching trips. Sadly, in the many, many whale watching trips that we have had, we have never seen one of those whales actually reach up out of the water. We've seen lots of whale spouts and whale backs and whale tails and, you know, other pods of killer whales and things like that. And occasionally, those boat whaling trips have been very choppy. One of our trips to England, we took the little tiny boat that goes full of people out into the you know, North Sea and goes along the coastline, along the white cliffs, out and circles around so that you can see the Beachy Head Lighthouse off the coast of Southwest England. What an amazing view you get when you're out on the water. But I will never forget one of those trips when the water was so choppy that we were all hanging on to the sides of that boat for dear life. And then one time, we actually took a three-hour tour. Now, some of you that are old enough should laugh right there because we took a three-hour tour out of the out of Corpus Christi Bay, and we went out of the bay and past the sea walls. And in the bay, the water was calm, it was beautiful. I thought, oh, this is gonna be an easy breezy trip. But when we went on the other side of the sea wall, the water was so choppy, this boat was going up like this and slamming down on the waves and up and slamming down, and I was getting so seasick. It was bad. And the owner of the little boat, who sailed quite often, said to me, he said, Cindy, you look a little bit green. You need to focus your eyes on the horizon. Focus your eyes on the horizon. That was some of the best advice I have ever gotten. I made it through the rest of that trip because I was holding onto the side of the boat, looking out over the ocean and focusing on the horizon. 
In the ancient world, the world in which Matthew was writing to new Jewish believers, the sea was associated with the god of chaos. The people believed that from the beginning of time, this destructive, unpredictable power called chaos was battling against all that was good and right and orderly and trying to tear it apart. So there the disciples were that night. They had been told by Jesus to take their small fishing boat and go across the Sea of Galilee to the other side and he would meet them there. They got out into the water and a storm came upon the sea. And they were being blown about by forces greater than they were. And they were feeling totally helpless. At that moment in time, they were looking chaos right in the eye. And they were scared to death. Have you looked chaos in the eye lately? For all of us right now, chaos could be given the name COVID-19. Many of us have encountered chaos before in our lives, even before COVID-19. For some of us, and I am among this, this group, chaos raised its ugly head when we received a cancer diagnosis. Or chaos may have shown itself in your life when a loved one died suddenly, or when you're home, many of us listening today. Chaos may have looked like what happened when your home burned to the ground in a wildfire, or when a family is pulled apart by divorce or by financial issues. Chaos shows itself in all different kinds of ways. Any number of difficulties come our way. They have come my way, they come your way over the years. The disciples found themselves in a spiritual and physical battle in that moment as they tried to ride out the storm in the middle of chaos and fear. Their spiritual battle was that they knew Jesus was around somewhere and they were hoping, I think, and praying that somehow they would make it through their physical battle was their reality. At that moment, they thought they were going to perish. I have felt that way quite a few times in my lifetime. Have you? So the question for us today is, what can this passage tell us about facing our storms, those periods of chaos that come into our lives. Jesus, right before walking on water, had faced some storms of his own. Sometimes we think that Jesus' life was kind of this uh, strange combination of you know divinity and um, humanity in which he never suffered and he never had pain or was never sick and that is not true. Jesus had set aside his deity to be us, to be just like us in every way. And he had recently faced some storms of his own. The people in his own hometown of Nazareth had rejected his ministry. Those people he had grown up with, those people who had seen Jesus, who knew Mary and Joseph, had rejected Jesus' ministry and teaching and had asked him to please leave. And then, very soon thereafter, he found out that his own cousin, John, the one we call John the Baptist, had been beheaded in prison. 
And as if that wasn't enough, everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people followed after him, begging for him to heal them and to, you know, just help them in some way. And over 5,000 people had gathered to hear him preach. And he ended up feeding them all in a miraculous way. Jesus found himself being very tired. And he was exhausted. And because of that, he leaves the disciples, asks them to go across the lake ahead of him. And he goes off by himself to pray. Well, that's the first lesson that we can learn from this passage. When you are surrounded by chaos, when I am surrounded by chaos, when we are surrounded by the storms in our life, when the world seems to have gone mad, we should not quit praying, which is what I hear from a lot of people. I've just given up on God. I'm not praying anymore. They're, you know, I don't think God is listening. <laughs> Instead of giving up and not praying anymore, Jesus shows us that in the midst of our chaos, that is when we should be praying even more fervently. Even more fervently. Jesus knew without a doubt that prayer would renew his spirit more than anything else that he could possibly do. And we need to learn from him. We need to learn that lesson and take it to heart. And then, when Jesus sees, because the scripture tells us that he sees that his friends are in that boat in the middle of the storm, when Jesus sees that his friends are afraid and struggling, he goes to help them. He doesn't just sit up on the hill and go, oh, well, I hope they make it and just sit up there and watch them all drown or whatever could have happened to them. He goes to them and offers his help. These are people that he cares about. These are people that are following him and these are people that he is willing to help. And when Jesus comes into view, Peter actually asks Jesus for help, but not just help, but for proof of who Jesus is. He says, if you really are the Son of God, have me come to you on the water. And Jesus doesn't look at him and go, how dare you ask me to prove to you who I am? No, Jesus' reaction is one of love and compassion. And all he does is reach out his hand and say, Come. Now, if the Lord Jesus gives us a specific task to do, like the one he gave to Peter in that moment, he said to Peter, Come. Then we need to do it. And fortunately for Peter, it was one of the times when he listened and did what he was asked to do. Recently, I have been praying and, and fretting, I'll admit, I get there too sometimes, about a situation in my life and asking the Lord to show me what to do. I won't get into all the details with you, but... I was driving my car, and I pray a lot when I'm driving to and from work um, at the moment because I live about 25 minutes away right now. And so the Lord gives me that time, coming and going, to pray. And I was praying, and you know, like, Lord, you got to fix this for me. This is not fair, blah, 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 you know, just going on and on. And all of a sudden, just as clear as, as a bell in my mind, I heard... Stay and learn. I probably should have been driving at that moment because my first reaction was, no, that is not what I was expecting to hear from you, Lord. But I kept driving. 
and I've had a lot of time to think about it. And it turns out that that was probably exactly, or that is exactly what I need to do. Just stay and learn. So when the Lord gives us some pretty clear instructions sometimes, and oftentimes uh, the Lord will do that. It's really clear. Other times we have choices that we need to make. But we still need to choose. When we feel that it's from the Lord, we need to act upon it. And in the midst of our storms, we are asked to listen to God and learn. That's what happened to me. Stay and learn. We actually have to step out, like Peter did, into the unknown and allow God to guide our steps. Peter managed to do that for a brief moment. It says he actually walked on the water. And finally, once we have prayed, once we have tried to help others, once we have begun to do the task that God has chosen for us to do, once we have allowed God to guide our steps, and once we have quieted ourselves enough to listen, then we can focus on Jesus and not on the chaos and fear around us. That was Peter's mistake. He was walking on water as long as he had his eyes on Jesus. As soon as he changed his focus and noticed the wind and the rain or waves all around him, we know what happened. He began to go down into the water. Jesus is like our horizon in the storm. Jesus holds us up and helps us to focus on that one thing, that horizon that will not change. And that is the love of Jesus. That will never change. No matter what our challenge is, no matter what chaos raises up its ugly head, no matter what storm we may find ourselves in the midst of, the love of Jesus becomes and is our stabilizing and life-giving horizon. So, let us keep our eyes ever focused on Jesus, who is that center in any and all of our life storms. When we do, everything else becomes just wind and just waves, <laughs> and we will be able to rise above the chaos and face our storms with love and kindness and faithfulness. But hear me when I say, that having Jesus with us and in us does not mean that we won't have chaos or storms in our lives. What it does mean, however, is that we do not, please hear me, we do not have to weather them alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.